Yeah, John, I think, um, you know, Coach Sweeney uh, wanted me to come here and, and fill a role um, that he thought uh, was best for me, and I felt like um, this is a situation that was best for my 30-year-old self and um, to where I can be, be in the moment and be the best possible person I can for this team and help them um, at all costs. And um, I feel like each day that's my goal coming in this facility. I want to um, improve and help the team in any way that I possibly can. Um, and I think coming here, I definitely uh, knew that in mind, and that's uh, what I've been wanting to do ever since. Hundred percent, yeah, John. It's uh, been extremely awesome learning from such great coaches. I mean, Coach Sweeney has just has such an amazing perspective um, on on really everything on life, on football, and, and um, it's so great to hear. I mean, being in a couple other places, you hear so many different uh, from different people, and hearing from Coach Sweeney, I mean, he's obviously the best to do it, one of the best to do it. So it's just really awesome to learn from him and hear from him. So um, you know, if I do want to get into coaching down the road, that um, I have his knowledge. Um, that he's passed uh, down to our team that I, I can use uh, as, for me as well down the road. Um, I mean, I know they both are phenomenal leaders. I mean, as you can tell, they both have won a lot of games, um, and obviously they're both doing something right. Um, Differences-wise, I think they're really – I mean, people could say they're, they're different here and there, but um, in my opinion, they're both just phenomenal leaders and um, can find a way to make their team win when things get tough, when adversity hits, they step up and they uh, get the job done. I mean, I have a, a ton of credit to, uh, to Coach Saban. I mean, he helped me get to where I was my first three years. And, um, and you know, Coach Sweeney right now, they've both done a great job overall and, and really are, are great winners for sure. David, I'm Tyreen, I'm Carl. Hey. When you, you know, made the move out to, out to Arizona, what was your thought process? I'm going to do this a year, two years. Did you think you wanted to get out? And then, you know, what made you decide, yeah, I want to do this another year and choose Clemson? Right. So, David, I think, um, you know, in the moment, I felt like it was uh, the best decision for me to go to Arizona State. And honestly, um, I mean, people can say, why did you do this? Why did you do that? But I really know, and, and, and coming here has helped me learn this, that everything happens for a reason. And I probably wouldn't be sitting in this seat today if I didn't make that pit stop. Mm -hmm. and, and I know this is where I'm supposed to be right now. And so taking that step in my life built me to where I am today. So, um, I mean, really, I just put it all in God's hands, and, you know, everything is uh, up to Him. And so I'm, I'm honestly extremely happy about my experience there. I learned a lot, um, saw a lot of cool things, was a different side of the country. So uh, that was really cool. And so, you know, I didn't really know what my next step was. It was a, a quick decision, you know, obviously. Um, and so it's just really cool to see where I am now. I mean, I, never, I really never would have thought I'd be sitting in this seat right now, to be honest with you. Right, did you already know? Did you been here before? Did you already know, or did that you know seeing it that day or the number one that kind of for you? Um, I think to be honest with you, I had heard so much about Clemson coming out of high school. I uh, you know taking a few visits there, and, and um, I guess being in college, you just see how great of a leader Coach Sweeney is, and how awesome he is to his players, and how uh, great of an environment that he's built here. And I think with me. Just seeing that and, and just having the opportunity when he, he wanted me to come up here and just come to a bowl practice and um, and just getting to sit down and talk to him, it just made it so clear that there really wasn't, couldn't be a better option than, than uh, Clemson. So I think it was, it definitely worked out in my favor, him uh, wanting me to come up here. Um, yeah, John, so he, it's my dad's grandfather, so my great-grandfather, um, and for sure, I heard so many stories. I mean, growing up in, in Birmingham, Alabama, I'm just an hour away from uh, Tuscaloosa, so I would go to games and stuff as kids, and, you know, you hear so many stories from past players, um, and even, even when I was playing there, and, and even playing here, you know, there's some uh, staff members that had, uh, had played for um, my great-grandfather, and so it's, it's really cool just to be able to hear the different sides of stories, the perspective that they have, because I, obviously I never got a chance to meet them. And so, um, you know, it never built pressure, never anything like that. It was kind of just an honor to have in my life and so special to think about that I never got a chance to meet him, but he made such a lasting impact on so many people's lives that it makes me want to do the same thing for others as well. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, I think, you know, I've always heard when, when you love something, you run with it. And uh, I really have uh, learned so much through uh, through playing ball. I mean, being behind some of the greatest quarterbacks to do it right now. I mean, there's four guys that I've played behind that were first-round picks um, at Alabama and then learned, obviously, a ton from some NFL coaches at uh, ASU and here with Coach Queen and his staff are just so great. And so I think I've just been able to learn so much about the game um, and from really just the statistical side, everything, I've uh, watching tape, all that, I've just built so much knowledge to where, and I, and I love it so much and I want to spend so much more time doing it that I don't know if I could give it up quite yet. I feel like I could definitely see myself in the coaching world. Hey, and Coach Riley, he's absolutely phenomenal. He has uh, been such a great eye-opening for me. I mean, I've seen just the most relaxed, chill play caller I've ever seen in my entire life. He is just straight to the point, knows what he's doing. I mean, we're going to do our stuff, and we're going to do it efficiently. And he gives the the quarterback a, a really st stability behind himself where he can sit back and, you know, he, he has complete confidence in the throw the football. So, I mean, even – no matter who's in there, uh, we're going to be able to be effective. And, and with the offense that he's he's built, I mean, you have no shyness away from just slinging the rock. I mean, that's what's so great about it. And um, and he's just built so much confidence in us and on the, in the entire team and what he's done installing the offense that it's been really, really great. Do you follow him or just, just the ball part of it? Uh, my full name is Paul William Bryant Tyson. And so I have the, the name change from – so my great-grandfather uh, – my grandmother, so that's kind of where the um, name change was his daughter. Um, so I got Tyson, but Paul William Bryant, I named after my great uncle, uh, who, and then my great grandfather as well. What, what is it like kind of growing up with, with that name? Yeah, you know, the, the kids you grew up with, did they know? Did they know about the name? I mean, they, yeah, it's, you, know, you said David, right? Yeah. David, yeah, I think, I mean, like I said, it's just such an honor because. Um, it really could have, uh, you know, like a lot of people can come at you from uh, different type of ways and say there's a lot of pressure here, or, uh, you need to live up to this, but it really just made me think how blessed I was to be in this uh, in this situation. I mean, it, it gave me an opportunity to um, love football, and it brought me to really who I am today and, and probably did help me want to get into coaching as well. So I think overall, uh, it just was such an honor growing up, and, and you know, I was always pulling foul there because of him, and so it was really cool just to have him uh, in, in my life, and just knowing obviously I didn't get to meet him, but it really has had, had a lasting impact on who I am today. He passed away, I guess, 27 years probably before you were born. 81, right? Three. Okay, 81. Yeah. Uh, but but what, what stories of your family just passed down, you know? Do you remind any one of him? Is there any kind of story that stands out? You're like, that's my great I think, um, I mean, there's obviously some great stories where uh, he got the nickname Bear, he wrestled uh, a grizzly bear for a dollar and, and, and beat him and then didn't even get the dollar. The guy ran away and didn't even pay him a dollar. I think he was like 12 years old. So there's a lot of so, so cool stories and how um, I've heard from past players how he was just so tough on them. And, you know, in that time, like, you don't even have water breaks at practice. So, like, I mean, it was just a whole different ball game. And then, um, but I think, Probably the coolest thing for me personally I had was I still remember um, Coach David Cutcliffe. I went and visited Duke, and uh, I'd never seen him, uh, and never met Coach Cutcliffe in person, but the second he uh, had seen me, he started crying because he thought I looked so familiar to uh, my great-grandfather, and, um, and that really hit me differently because I had never obviously had that encounter before, and, and now Coach Cutcliffe, Coach Cutcliffe is like a mentor to me today, and he's been so great for me um, and has even – helped train me a little bit throughout the off season and so he's he's been great and that was a really cool moment for me um, that to be able to see that. Did you wrestle a grizzly grizzly bear for a dollar? I mean I feel like I had to if my great grandfather did. I couldn't shy away from it. But <laughs> I'm not gonna go out of my way to go fight one, that's for sure. Or then it played through Alabama, excuse me, I misspoke. Um, you know like Andrew's out. Some people that had uh, played at Alabama Coach Sweeney himself, and they had just also heard so many stories about my great-grandfather that uh, it has just been passed down to them, and then they were able to pass it down to me. And so it was, it's really even cool that I've learned some from a lot from my great-grandfather from here as well. I'm just joking that. I apologize, though. Uh, what's your role now? Uh, being a veteran quarterback, I remember when I was a 
like still go like in supporting them and they kind of see had some you know bloopers I guess in the first couple games like when those happen do you have any words for him or any ways that you support him or how do you see him handle those situations right I think um, Joshua I think plays actually played very effectively and I think he um, has done a great job responding to adversity hitting I mean like especially the quarterback position that adversity hits in an instant and you got to be able to bounce back and I think he's done a great job of that um, so far this season is and it's continued to improving um, but I think for my role I just want to be any I just want to be in his back corner and I told him this I said any anything that you need from me I'm always here for you and I want and if you want my help I'm going to be here and, and try to help in the, in the best way possible and so coming off the field if I see something from a different angle because he might be looking at one thing and I can uh, look on the back side of a of a coverage or something, I can maybe give him a couple extra tips. And so um, coming off the field, I do want to uh, be an asset to him um, along with Coach Riley and the rest of the staff and some of the players just so I can uh, use some of my knowledge that I've built and, and learn to, to help make it more efficient on the field um, overall. But I think a lot of it kind of starts behind the scenes um, where it goes from film watching. I mean, we'll, me and Kate will spend hours in the film room just uh, checking out the opposing team. Uh, and seeing the coverages they run and, and where we're going to attack the defense, maybe watching each play and seeing, okay, if they do this coverage, how are we going to attack them? This coverage, how are we going to attack them? So um, really a lot of it could come from behind the scenes, but um, I feel like I just want to be on the field as much of an asset as I can to the team um, on the sideline and and uh, just help them with my knowledge any way that I can. Oh, it's extremely sharp. I mean, it's... As a sophomore, when I was a sophomore, I, I definitely wasn't as sharp as he is. I mean, he is on top of his stuff, and he uh, works extremely, extremely hard, as hard as I've ever seen. Um, and, you know, I think that attests to him. I mean, he is, he's definitely uh, going to be a 100% a, a stud player. I mean, you can just tell by the way he uh, is in the film room and, and cares about his business and cares about every single rep at practice. I mean, everything matters, and it's the little things that really are important in the discipline that he has. Oh, listen, listen. What exactly was it, and how much harm do you feel like Josh will fall if he had to play in a game that you think might have some shades that you can prepare him right now? Right. Um, so my injury was I actually, like, dislocated my um, thumb a little bit. I don't know exactly what it was. It was a UCL. Like, Drew Brees did it. Um, some, a bunch of quarterbacks do it when they throw and they, like, hit the helmet, you know. And it, I, I can't really explain it. I don't know. I'm not too educated on the doctor side of things, but – um, I know that it was probably about a 10, 8 to 10 week recovery and so it kind of it happened right there on that drill so John had just missed um, kind of the spring game and, and, and the whole prep going up to it so that was obviously tough but I think um, kind of with just the years that I've played in the past I was able to uh, still learn um, in the film room and stuff from Coach Riley. He did a great job of uh, still keeping me a long path. And I, a lot of times during practice, I would just kind of sit back about 30, 40 yards from the play and just try to rep it out um, by myself with no other people besides me just so I could stay locked in and efficient because it's um, also wanting to get all the uh, reps in that I could mentally, but along with um, something physically as well. So that was kind of as much as I could do. But um, And then as, in the summer, I think I had to take another step and – uh, grow as a man and grow as in, in the offense and that would just be you know rather than in the month of May just staying here uh, rather than going home and, and just uh, wanting to learn the offense even better so then when fall camp came I was uh, I guess much more comfortable with it than I would have been uh, right spring if that makes sense. Right. Thanks, I appreciate y'all thank y'all so much for having me.